Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to call you Molly. I assume that's okay. That's okay. Okay. Um, Molly, can you tell the jury what your profession is? I'm an educator. Where is it? Are you a teacher? I am a teacher. Okay. Um, and who is your employer? Oxford Schools. Okay. How long have you been in? Uh, how long have you worked for Oxford Schools? I started working for Oxford in the fall of '98. Okay. Would that be your entire career? That is my entire career. Okay. And you stayed in that one school district. Correct. Okay. Um, your current position is what? Um, I work for Oxford Virtual Academy. All right. And when did you begin that position? I began that position 18 months ago. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take you back to November 30th, 2021. Can you tell the jury what your position was at that time? At that time in Oxford, I was um, under teacher contract, but I was the ELA coach and um, the International Baccalaureate Coordinator. So I worked specifically with curriculum and teachers, um, like instructional moves in the classroom. Okay. So, so ELA, what's ELA? I'm sorry, thank you. It's English Language Arts. All right. Thanks, Ms. Uh So how much contact did you have with students compared to teachers at that point? I would say minimal in comparison to teachers. All right. And you, you did, though, spend some time in the classroom in your career? Absolutely, yes. I spent the majority of my career in the classroom. Okay. Um, so on that day, um, what was your typical day like around that time in that position? So in that position, I would work with um, building kind of professional development opportunities or I was working with, you know, working with teachers individually. On that day in particular, I was working with the media specialist and my other coaching colleagues, my other instructional coaching colleagues on building professional development for the next day. All right. Did you have a classroom? I had an office uh, that I shared with two other individuals, and it was like half a classroom, but it was in the educational um, hallway. So it was a classroom made into two offices. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can you tell the jury when classes began that morning? What was the schedule of the day? It began and end, if you if you remember. Um, so you're referring to like the start day of the school yes. day. The school day started um, around seven thirty, um, and ended around three o'clock. Okay. Um, and I know Oxford had a, a different. They didn't have exactly the same schedule every day. Yeah, but. we had a rotating seven, so we met six days a week. Um, or sorry, we met six classes a day, um, and we, but we had seven classes. So they, the students only were there in every single class for four hours All right. a week. Can you tell the jury what passing time is? Passing time was about Oxford's one of the larger high schools in the state. It's the largest single floor high school in the state, I think, at the time. Um, Do and you so know how many students? I, I, you know, off the top of my head, I don't. Okay. Um, and... Um, and so there were about eight minutes between passing times, uh, or between passing. All right. November 30th, 2021, uh, were there any COVID protocols still in place? Yes, we were still in masks um, at that point in time, yes. And were lockers being used? Lockers were not being used. Okay, so how were the kids getting their things from class to class? They were carrying book bags. Yep. I'm going to um, show you what's been marked as people's proposed Exhibit 5. I don't believe there's an objection, Your Honor. That's correct, Your Honor. When I say I'm going to show you, there's, it's going to be on this screen and this screen. Five, seven, eight. <laughs> okay. Molly, what, what is that? Uh, that's the layout of the high school. All right. So that's a map of the school. Correct. Okay. And can you tell me where your classroom slash office was? Um, so if you're looking at that yellow portion, I am, thank you, um, I am where you see 222, and then there's 226, I'm that little sliver right in between there, and that was 224. Okay, Mark's going to show you yep. on the map. He's Correct. not letting me have access to the clicker for the yep. trial, so relying on him. <laughs> okay, so is that your classroom? Yes, that like little sliver where you can see, it looks like a bunch of names are written in there. Mm -hmm. um, that was the room that I was in, yes. Okay. And I'm 
I'm going to take you to um, around the time of about 12.50. Okay. Um, what were you doing during that time? So on that day, um, the, the year prior I was in the classroom and, um, and I had a student who popped by um, around that time just to check in and wanted to chat. Um, I had a chat with her. There was, I believe it was the beginning of passing that she stopped by. We had a quick little chat. Um, was that conversation in your it was office, in the office or in the hallway? Yep, it was in the office. Was the door open or closed? The door was open. Okay. Um, we had a little chat. Um, she left. I was alone in the office. Um, and passing was still happening, so I moved to my, um, my desk space just to check some emails, check on a, you know, a couple of things. Okay. Um, so your desk was in the back of the classroom? Yeah, it was towards the back side, yes. Facing the door? Facing the door, Okay, correct. Um, and did you have a practice of what you did during passing time? So sometimes I would go out in the hall um, and check, like just to check and see what was going on, or I might chat with a teacher or two. I didn't on that day because it was towards the end of passing time, and so I knew things would be wrapping up and teachers would be heading back to their classes. Okay. Uh, so at some point, did you see or hear anything unusual? <clears throat> Yeah, so um, all of a sudden I could hear a commotion in the hallway, and I look, you know, looked up from my from my laptop, and I see a bunch of kids running through the hallway. It was a pack of kids, um, and they were moving pretty quickly, and there was a commotion around it. Um, I couldn't tell if it was like excited, you know, that that it was like higher pitched though. And it was almost like some of the kids' hands were extended, like they were trying to move really quickly. Okay, for the record, you have your hands, both your hands yep. up, shoulder, um, just Okay, and that seemed unusual to you? It did. Okay, did it seem unusual because of it, it was at the end of passing time, or just because of the movement and the sound? It was the movement, it was the sound, it was the large bulk of kids that okay. were moving. Um, what did you do? Um, I exited in my office. I believe that there was possibly a fight. Um, so I, I run out of my office. I'm about midway through where 222 is. Um, and I see all those kids exiting out of door four. So I know there's not a fight. So if you look at the map, you come out of your classroom and you look down the hallway and they're all running out of the school. Yeah, on a door four. Okay, and that was unusual. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes, I had never seen that before. All right, um, and and then what happened? Um, I paused for a second because I'm thinking like, well, what what is what's going on, right? I don't know what's happening. Um, I head back into my my office space. The hallway is completely clear, um, and I walk into my office and I'm like, all right, what? What could possibly be happening in this moment? Was was it unusual for the hallway to be completely clear? Um, the, I don't believe the bell had rung yet, so okay. that was unusual. Okay. And so, what did you do? Um, it was um, in pausing, um, trying to like gather what to do next. I heard three things pretty quickly together, like so quickly together that I have a hard time distinguishing what ha came first and what came last. Um, but there were the sounds of like three like loud pops um, that I could have mistaken for lockers closing if we were using lockers. Okay. So when you heard the loud, the three pops, what did you think they, that sound was? I, well, again, there was... There was that, there was, um, doors started slamming. I could hear like boom, 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 boom. And, um, and then uh, the principal at the time, Steve Wolf, came over the PA and said, um, we're heading into lockdown, this is, not a, this is not a drill. And how long had you known Steve? Uh, so a couple years at that point in time. Okay, did his voice sound panicked? Um, his voice sounded, it was like, a, urgent, but you could tell he was like tempering any, um, you know, like panic. 
So was that before the, the loud pops or after, if you can remember? Honestly, I, I, I cannot remember. Okay. When you heard this, was your door open or closed? My door, when I came back in, um, I pulled it, but it didn't shut, so it was open um, a couple inches. Okay. So what did you do? Um, at that point in time, I moved to shut my door. Okay. Um, did you, after the pop, did you smell anything? No. Did you see anything? No. All right. And then you t tell the jury what happened when you turned around and headed to the door. So um, I walked to the door. I immediately pull it shut. Um, to the left of my door, so my door was here, and there was a glass part, like, you know, floor-to-ceiling glass. And then right here was a night lock system. Can you tell the jury what a night lock system is? So a night lock is a simple gadget that goes into the door that goes into the floor so that if the door were unlocked, it's like a second security measure. Um, if the door was not locked, or even if it was, um, someone can't get in. So if the glass is shut out, they can, even if they were trying to undo the door, they can't open the door. And when did you learn about night locks? Um, maybe four years prior. Okay. Did you do that? Well, why did you install the night lock? Um, well, one, I was directed that we're in lockdown, okay. right? So as soon as I knew that we're, we're in lockdown, that's what you do. Um, did you, were you able to install the night lock? So I grabbed the night lock, you know, I undid the, the, the piece, grabbed it, um, and looked down at it. So I also, um, some of the doors have different installs, that whether the door goes, you know, in or out from the room. And so I looked at it to see, just to remind myself which one, um, because the other office that I have at the middle school, or had at the middle school at the time, had at, a different. At this point, Molly, the door is shut or closed? The door is shut. Are you facing the door or facing the I'm way? facing the door, okay. so I'm, but I'm close enough to that wall because I had just grabbed it. Do you know about what the distance was between you and, and that door? Um, not even a foot. Okay. And then what happened? Um, I look at it, and out of my peripheral vision, I can see some sort of movement. Um, and so I look up, um, and I see someone dressed in dark, oversized clothing. And you're looking through that glass looking pane that glass next pane. to your door. Okay. Uh, they have the mask on, uh, a hat, glasses, and a hood. Um, and I lock eyes with them. Had you ever seen that person before? I had not, no. Did you know if it was a student or... No. I have. I did not know if it was a student. All right. And you said you locked eyes. I locked eyes. Um, and then instantly I noticed. I see that some some movement. And so I looked down and um, I realized he's raising a gun to me. Okay. Can you describe? Yeah. The gun, um, the gun was it was black, and I remember thinking. Uh, he's, he's raising the gun to me, that there was no orange tip. Um, I had heard prior that BB guns have an orange tip. When you say he was raising the gun, can you explain what that, what that looked like? Um, was, it, was it one arm or two arms? Well, I just saw the one starting to move up. I saw the gun, and I moved. Which way did you move? I moved away from the, from the glass partition, away from the, from the door, toward back into the room. Okay. You just described, you saw something in your peripheral vision. You looked up. Um, you locked eyes. I locked eyes. He didn't hesitate. Okay. About how long was that from the time you saw the peripheral vision and then the gun was raised? A second. Okay. If that, when you locked eyes with this individual, what did you see? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? Describe that for me. Um, I lock eyes with him, and I instantly see that movement. 
and I jump to the side. Okay. What happened after you jumped to the side? Um, as I jump, I can. And was the night? Did you ever get the night lock installed at that? The point? night lock is not installed at this point. Okay. So when I move, um, I kind of jump and turn my body this way at the same time. Okay, and you're. For the record, you're motioning, turning your yeah. shoulders to the right. To the right. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel uh, like my, my left shoulder moves back a bit, and I feel a burn like hot water had stung me. Where did you feel that? Um, in my um, arm. Which arm? In my left arm. Okay. Up you're pointing to your, your yeah. right below your shoulder? Yep. Okay. And are you... Are you standing up? Are you sitting down? Are you? I'm standing up at this point in time. Um, I feel that hot, that hot burn go through my arm. Um, and I turn back. There was a window in the back of my room that leads out to the courtyard. And I see a bullet hole. OK, I'm going to um, show you on the screen what's been marked as um, people's proposed exhibit six. Any objection? What is that, Molly? Uh, that's the office that I shared. Okay. And that, can you just describe where the desk is, where what, what you just described, and point that out? You said yep. you turned around um, to the back of the classroom. Yep. So you can see on that window exiting, there's a white mark. Right there? Yep. That would be the bullet hole. Did you... Is, is that what you um, noticed when you turned around? That is what I noticed when I turned around, correct. Okay. At this point, what were you thinking? A BB gun can't do that. I. It seems like really silly. What seems silly? That I couldn't wrap my head around what was happening. I mean, after you felt the, the warm and you still were thinking it might be a BB gun? Yeah. Okay. So what did you do? Was um, the night lock installed at this point? The night lock's not installed at this point, and, and the only thing I'm thinking is I have to barricade this door. Like, there was instinct that kicked in. Um, so what you can't see is right around that corner there was this huge filing cabinet. And I think if we can point so to the, around that corner to the, Yeah. Okay. And um, so I grab it, because I'm afraid to go back towards the door at this point in time. And I try to move it, thinking maybe I can pull it out enough and push it. And it was just too heavy for me. So that rolling cart was sitting next to it. Um, that's when I pulled out the rolling cart. And I no, sorry, I take that back. That's I okay. didn't do take that yet. I crawled down on my hands and knees, and I put that night lock in. Um, and then I moved for the roll. I was like, I just have to keep barricading. I just have to keep barricading. And so I grabbed the rolling cart. Is the object in the... Yeah, you can picture? see it's a little red object on the rolling cart. Yep. Oh, that's the night lock. <coughs> yes. Okay. But that, it's sitting on the... That's the rolling cart, right? Correct. Okay. All right. And were you able to put it in front of the door? I was able to put the rolling cart in front of the door, correct. Okay. And then what did you do? Um, then the only thing I can think of is he's going to come back and finish what he wanted to do. Could you hear anything else in the hallway? At this point, I'm not hearing anything. Okay. And so what did you do? So I continue, I go back to that large cabinet because I know if I'm anywhere in the back of this room, he can see. So I need to hide in this front corner. And so I pull that, um, that large filing cabinet back just enough to crawl behind it, so that if he comes to that window, he can't see where I'm at. So the way, way the classrooms are is you have to be at a certain angle to see certain parts of the room from the hallway, correct? Correct. Okay. And you said you moved to that corner behind because what? Because I, I, I didn't want him to see where I was at. Okay. Once you were behind the cabinet, um, were, you, were you sitting? Uh, I was crouched down, um, just trying to make myself as small as possible. Right, I got really low. Um, I was on my bottom, crouched as close together physically as I could make myself. Okay. 
What did you do next? Um, I had texted my husband, I love you, active shooter. Um, and then I started feeling blood dripping down my arm. And what did you do? Um, At this point, had you registered that you had been shot? I don't think I was registering that I was shot. I just knew that I was bleeding. Okay. What did you do? Um, I had a um, carnigan on that day. And so I, well, you can see in the photo there's this red little bag on the side, on the right side of the wall. Those are, um, yep, those are medical response bags that we keep in every room. Um, so if someone's bleeding or if a, a tourniquet's needed, uh, they're in there, but I was too afraid to go back and grab it. So, um, so at that point I knew I needed to put a tourniquet on. I knew I was bleeding. Um, I removed my carnigan and I used one of the sleeves of the arm, uh, wrapped it up on top and pulled with one arm and my, my teeth with the other uh, to tighten it. And Molly, um, how many inches down was that wound? Um, it sits right here. Okay. And you brought a card in so that you could Remove. show the jury what that yeah. looks like so they know exactly where you were hit? Yep. Go ahead. Um, I don't know if you can all see okay, but... You can step down if you... Okay. Can see. everyone see? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so you can see it kind of sits in the back. So when I was turned, that was the entrance and the exit. And there's two holes there. Yep, so it entered here and exited here. Um, and the space in between, uh, the, the heat of the bullet cauterized. Um, the skin? The skin. Okay. You can sit back down. Um, you put the tourniquet where on your shoulder? I put it above the wound. Okay. How do you know how to do that? Um, we go through trainings um, once a year regarding um, what to do, okay. you know, in the situation. What, what happened next? Um, I put the tourniquet on, and it, I'm in my head, I'm thinking, okay, what, what do I do next? What's like the next move here? And my daughter texts me. Um, she didn't go to Oxford High School, but she went to a neighboring school district. Um, and they had heard through social media that there was a shooting at Oxford High School. And so she sent me a message and just said, um, Mom, are, are you okay? Um, and I responded to her that um, I love you. Um, I'm sheltered in place, and I'm fine. You didn't tell her you were I did not tell her I was shot, no. Molly, I want to go back, and I'm so sorry. When um, the shooter raised his, his hand, um, what, what were your, um, what did you notice about, if you noticed anything about his stance, or you said you locked eyes? Yeah, his feet were set about hip distance apart. Um, and that's, you know, he, he was, and his shoulders were like he was square, right? He was square. Um, how long were you in that classroom? Um, I was in there for about 20 minutes. Were you communicating with anyone else in school or um, law enforcement or administration? No, um, there were a couple teachers. Um, my, my hallway had a text thread, and that was not active. There was nobody texting on that. But another part of the building where the English Language Arts Department is at, they, um, they were texting. And, and one of them said, um, I heard there was a shooter. And I responded that I saw one. Did you respond that I've been shot? I did not. Why is that? Um, I think I didn't want to like create panic. Like I wanted to make sure that people knew it was serious, but there's no like I'm okay. Okay. At this point, did you have any idea where the shooter was? If anyone else had been hurt, what were you hearing? Anything? Nothing. And it was it was absolute silence for a long time. Um, and then um, I started to hear a volume of footsteps, and I thought. 
they must be evacuating a classroom. Um, and so when that shift occurred, I texted the teacher next door and I said, hey, um, you're the only one that knows right now, but I've been shot. Um, I hope I'm the only one. How long was that? How long were you in the room then? At that point, it was, it was probably 18, 15, 18 minutes. Okay. At some point, did somebody ask you to leave the, the classroom? Yes. So the teacher next door was like, oh my gosh, um, I'm calling the office. There was another teacher in the room with her who texted administration. And at some point, did somebody come to the door? Yep. So the text from administration, um, Kurt Noose was at my door within maybe two minutes. I don't, I, 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 time's hard on that. Um, and he was like knocking, uh, Molly, Molly, are you in there? Um, I've known Kurt Noose since I, since I started Knox for, I did not trust that that was him at my door. What were you afraid that it was? I don't know. Um, everything that I knew to be reality wasn't. Okay. So did you answer him back, or did you open the door, or did you just remain silent? I was. I said, I'm in, I'm in here. And he said, are you okay? Um, I don't remember how I responded. It was within a second or two that... Um, that then there were police at the door, and they were like, are you in here? Are you injured? I said, yes. Um, and then I said, I think I said, do you want me to, uh, it was, was clear that they wanted me to, like, we were going to, they were going to, they were there for me. And they couldn't, they couldn't just open the door. They can't just open that door. That night lock um, prevents them from getting in the door. And Molly, if you know, how would you get into that room if someone doesn't remove the night lock from the inside? Is there a way? So I know there's a special tool to use, but you'd have to take everything off that door, and that's all steel. So the frame, actually. Yes. Okay. Uh, and so they were asking you to, to remove the night lock. Did you do that? Um, oh, I said, do you want me to remove the night lock? And they said, yes, remove the night lock. And then I said, do you want me to open the door? And they said, yes, open the door. And, uh, and I'm down on the ground while I'm doing all of this. Like, I'm removing the night lock, and I'm opening up the door from my knees. And they, like, scoop me up. And I can see two, the two officers that scoop me up, but there's, I can see Kurt standing there against the lockers. And I can see four cops with guns. Did you see any students? I did not see any students, no. Well, Molly, I'm going to play... Um surveillance, which is marked People's Exhibit 7, which I know there is an objection to, um, but the judge has previously ruled. Um, just to let the jury know, this is, you're not going to see any victims in this, except for Molly, um, and nor are you going to see any students. with guns, how far away were they? And were they in the same direction? Um, they were, um, so I, when I, when they scooped me up, the two that scooped okay, me up. Okay, you look here. Yep. Is, that, is that the hallway? That's the hallway. Okay. Um, so you can see there's a multiple around, so it wasn't just the two. Where's your classroom in this photo? Um, it's, it's farther down, right? So you can see, uh, yep, like the, they're going inwards towards the classroom. Okay. It looks like that's an officer there. Okay. So I could see, I knew that they were officers based on the vests that they were wearing. Um, okay. And so they're just, um, they were just around, right, as well, like securing the area, I suppose. All right. Thank you.
Is that you, Molly? That is me. At this point, are you hearing any anything in the building? No, uh, the everything is silent. Like uh, almost like it's so, uh, like echoey. It's so silent. Okay, now you can see through that glass door. Is that you? That is me. What's happening? Uh, he's removing uh, the tur the self-made tourniquet from my cardigan, um, and he's putting on an actual tourniquet. Okay, and at some point you get into an ambulance, correct? <laughs> Yes. So at this point, um, he says, I'm going to radio to see if there's an ambulance available for you. Um, uh, making sure that no one else needed it ahead of me. Okay. Um, you eventually get into an ambulance. They take you where? They took me to look here. What happened when you got there? Um, so I um, got to look here. And um, the doctor comes out to the ambulance and introduces himself. Um, and they said, I was sitting in the ambulance the entire time, and then they said, we're going to put you on the gurney. Um, and I said, I can walk. I can walk. Like, if I can walk, I want to walk. And so they helped me out of the ambulance, and I walk in. And they're, like, studying, you know, like, hold, kind of almost holding me up, studying me. And the hallways are lined with doctors and nurses. Did you see any other victims? I did not, no. Okay. Um, and they treated your wound? They did. Okay. Um, were you able to, um, I, I assume they ran some tests. I want to be <coughs> cognizant of the judge's prior ruling about um, what you can testify to. But um, at what point? How long were you at the hospital? I have no idea what time I walked in those doors. Okay. Um, I was there for several hours. Um, did you learn at some point there were other victims? Um, I did ask when I was in the hospital. Um, is anybody else been injured? Um, and and I was you know I was told that there were other victims. And a few fatalities, yes. Okay. At some point, did you hear a teacher was shot? I did. And what did you think? I, I instantly thought it was um, another one of my colleagues. I knew the direction that I, you know, I saw him turn, so I knew what direction it came And And who was the teacher? Um, I thought it was Lauren Jasinski that was shot. But who was the teacher they referred to? It was me. At some point, um, you were shown weeks later um, a picture of your doorway. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? I do. Okay. Do you remember who showed that to you? No. Okay. Was it was it me? I did. Well, I did see. Um, I did see it in your office, yes. Okay, and you were preparing to testify? Yes. Um, I'm going to put that picture on the on the screen. It's a People's Exhibit 8. I don't think there's an objection. Um, Molly, is that your classroom door? It is mine. Um, yes. Okay. Um, what was your reaction when you saw that? He was aiming to kill me. Do you know which one of those shots landed in your shoulder? I don't. Um, I have no idea which one landed in my shoulder, but I know the top one. That's where my head would have been. And the two down below are my chest area. Okay. I unlock that door every day. And what was your, um, did you have some, what's your, what, what, is, what is your, when you think about the, the wound and why you weren't hit, why was it in the chest? That door, the distance, the door, and me moving was the only reason that I'm alive. How much, 
How many inches from your heart was that, uh, that injury to your shoulder? The actual wound is six inches, um, but my, my turn might have made it less. Excuse your honor? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you.